Welcome everyone to the Bullish Entrepreneur episode five. Episode five, guys, to all our listeners, be sure to check out the Bullish Entrepreneur YouTube channel for all our latest content. Also, don't forget to listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Don't forget, guys, thank you for tuning in again. Of course. Today, we're going to be talking about the digital convenience, yes. right? Which is the reason we started the Bullish Entrepreneur podcast to begin with. So today we're gonna to be talking about some of the best apps that we use and that can help you today. And some of these apps link directly to financial literacy. Mm -hmm. Obviously in our education system, we weren't taught financial literacy in school, nah. <laughs> right? We weren't taught how to save money, how to invest money or what to do with it, really. Mm -hmm. It was just taught, hey, you work for money, you get paid and you go out and spend it on the things that you earned it for. Exactly. Right? So a lot of things that people have to understand is there's sacrifices that you need to do with money in order for it to work for you, right? You need to invest it. When you invest, you're potentially losing this money you've invested for it to potentially make you a return. Exactly. Everything is possibility. There's nothing that's guaranteed. Yeah. So we do want to remind you that anything that has to do with investing in the market can be wins or losses. Do this at your own risk, of course, but these are tips that can help you ultimately. And if you educate yourself yeah. on the right ways of doing it, these apps can help you get started. And for those of you who have no idea about investing and are scared, this is why you're listening to us right now. And this is why you're watching because you're curious mm -hmm. and you're gonna be able to start off with these apps and hopefully we can give you the confidence that you need also reach out to us in our DMs if you have any questions. Yes, definitely. And that way we can help you out. So why are we saying all this? Well, the 2018 US Census has showed us that the average household income is $60,000 in a housing market that ranges from two hundred dollars to $500,000 starting off. So what does that show us? Well, basically that there's a need for entrepreneurship and a need for entrepreneurship drive. Why? Because your typical average job won't cut it alone. The fact that your average household income is $60,000 shows you that in order for you to really want to go out and buy your first home instead of renting in an apartment or anything like that, accumulating an asset that can benefit you in the long run, mm -hmm. you have to go out and do something extra. Find that side hustle that is needed to basically benefit you in the long run for that dream home that you want to have for you and your family, which is kind of sad if you think about it because it's like... <laughs> Back then, it wasn't like that. Yeah, anymore, right? it wasn't always like they, this. They were used to working, our, our parents, you know, were, each worked one job and that yep. was enough to take care of four or five kids, mm -hmm. feed everybody, take you on trips to Disneyland, Disney World, and, you know, from there, life was happy yeah. and the money, the dollar was able to be spread amongst mm -hmm. more things. Yeah. And nowadays, we're seeing that there's a shortage of that as well as the multiple streams of income that's needed, right? Yeah. The more streams of income that you can create for yourself, the safer you're going to be in the long run. Exactly. You don't have to worry about a job firing you if you have something that's able to bring in a stable amount of income for mm -hmm. you, right? Like there's a house that you can buy that costs you four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, right? But there is also a duplex or pretty much a fourplex mm -hmm. that you can buy for maybe five six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You put down almost about double the down payment yeah but you're getting direct income from this yeah and that finance that you that you just put in now that debt that you got into is making you money back directly and opposed to you paying for it so according to the 2018 u.s census 325 million people live in the u.s and then of that number 34.1 percent of people live at home now if you consider mm -hmm. that number and compare it to our hometown in miami 45 percent still live at home here in Miami. And that's nearly half our city's population, which makes us the wow. highest uh, rated city for people who still live at home, which is kind of crazy. When that you is think about incredible. It. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I think it, it shows people how much they need to listen to this podcast yeah. and also other podcasts out there and just resources there, you know, that offer business perspectives, mm -hmm. making a side business, a side hustle. And, you know, we say a side business, side hustle, because a lot of people are scared of taking on the full responsibility of a business. Mm -hmm. You know, they still want to maintain their job so they could pay the bills off and things yeah. like that. But they want to build something on the side that can make them extra income. And we see why. Mm -hmm. If almost 50% of our city's population still live at home, there's a dire need for income, for, yeah. for finances. And I think financial literacy plays a big part of that. Yeah. Because the, it's not about the amount of money that you have, but the amount of money you're able to keep. It's just, you know, not having your eggs in one basket. 
being able to plant little seeds here and there. I was reading uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad and Robert Kiyosaki. Oh yeah, about, you know, great book, plan. man. The, the pl definitely great read. You should uh, all of you guys listening and uh, and watching this right now definitely pick up that book. It it really opens your mind to the idea of fi financial literacy that we're talking about right mm -hmm. now. But basically, what I was trying to get at is having um, little seeds that you plant. From time to time based on the financial literacy and knowledge that you have of money yes. making and once you have that you're able to see what is a good deal what's a good investment which is what is not it helps you better manage your money and then mm -hmm. also allow you to understand what's the difference between an asset and a liability huge piece yes. that's it i a lot of people think that their home is an asset mm -hmm. and for those of you who are sitting here saying that first one a lot of people are like what's an asset <laughs> and then People who know obviously what an asset is, is simply something that is valued in money, mm -hmm. but it's not taking away from your daily check. Exactly. So your home is not an asset, it's a liability because it only takes from your check unless that home is paid off, mm -hmm. right? It's only taking from you a mortgage that you're paying every month. It's yeah. taking from you, it's not giving you anything back. An asset would be if you bought an apartment and rented it out. Yeah. Now, you're, let's say your mortgage is $700 and you charge $1,400 rent, mm -hmm. you're now making $700 a month. So that's what an asset would be compared to a liability. You know, something that we saw is that 88% of people have graduated high school. Yeah. So out of the 325 million people in the U.S., living here in the U.S., 88% have graduated high school. So we have that other 12% that hasn't. Yeah. Small percentage. But of those 88%, only 32% have gone on to college wow. and graduated college or higher. Yeah. So they have a bachelor's degree or higher, 32%. So you subtract that and you see that there's about 56% more or less of people who have graduated high school but are in the limbo, mm -hmm. haven't gone on to college and have either started working for somebody or started their own business. Mm -hmm. Either way, there's someone who doesn't have a backup plan with a degree Exactly. And need a way to make money. And that's who we're trying to reach out to today. 56%, you're talking about 170 million people who potentially have not graduated college yeah. and need to find other ways of making income. And honestly, using some of these apps, they could help you, they could not. The only way they don't help you is if you don't execute on them every day, if you don't exactly. hold yourself accountable, if you don't follow the disciplines that we talk about in our previous episodes, mm -hmm. right? It's all about being disciplined, staying humble, and continuing on a path of always trying to make money, not just, oh, you made a little money, you're gonna withdraw and go party, yeah. but reinvest that money that you made now and have it continue making you some more money. With that being said, we'll go directly into the podcast. I hope you guys enjoy. Stay tuned. Hey everyone. So we're going to be diving directly into the apps that we're going to be talking about today that are going to be able to help you save money and also invest for those of you that are very new to the game and don't really know what to do with your money yeah. that you get from that check every month, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone says, hey, I live paycheck to paycheck. But if you really were to break it down, there's very few amount of people who are actually living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. You can use that money or resources that the government offers to be able to reinvest your money into other things or to save that money by sacrificing a current lifestyle that you're living, yeah. right? Not going out to parties as much, not going on as many vacations. Yep, yep. These are all sacrifices we have to make in order to save this money. So the great thing about the Albert app is it has many benefits to helping you save money and also invest your money. Okay. So aside from it being linked to your bank account where it's breaking down all of your habits and behaviors as to how you spend your money, mm -hmm. right? You're also gonna be able to invest your money if you want with their geniuses. So the genius portion of the app, you have to subscribe for, and I believe it's like five to $7 a month. Okay. But you get a specialized financial expert to help you break down all your bills, your investments, how to invest your money into other companies, even if it's low amounts, it could be $20 a month that you're setting aside, mm -hmm. right? But it's being invested into smaller stocks and things that you can just diversify your portfolio and it can make you a lot of money in the long run. Not everything necessarily is to be able to make this money now. Yeah. And that's what the Albert app stresses upon, right? Because everybody wants to make the money now, but you have to understand that you need guidance. Yeah. And that's what this app will provide you. It helps you see everything that's in your bank statements and say, hey, this is how much money I'm spending on Uber Eats. This is how much money I'm spending on going out. This is how much money I'm spending on nonsense subscriptions that aren't really helping me or benefiting me in any way. And now you can divert that into something that can provide you an ROI mm -hmm. or a return on investment, investments, yep. which is what that means, right? So going based off of that, 
you know, the Albert app is very beneficial to you. And if you use it, of course, everything comes down to your usage, whether you're going to actually take our advice on it or not take our advice on it. If you don't, of course, it's not going to provide any benefit to you. If you connect your bank account, right, you link it up to the app. Now you're serious because it has all of your privacy of your bank account. It's showing you everything that you don't want to see the money that's going, you know, where you know where it's going, but you kind of try to block it out. Like, yeah. I'm not spending that much money on mm -hmm. this, right? You're in so, denial in a sense. You don't want to admit to the truth of your money spending habits, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that, I mean, that goes back to our previous episodes. We were talking about discipline. Yes. Accountability, mm -hmm. right? Here's an app that directly combines both of those assets and helps you build your own assets and investing with their financial experts who are going to help you invest into the market yep. even though you don't know how to do it they will walk you right through it yeah and for a subscription fee i mean cancel your pandora for a month two months and try it out see what benefits it gives you if you learn anything new and that's amazing right we all need some sort of mental coach someone who can help us get through any type of like adversity that you may face if you feel uncomfortable in a certain situation yeah uh you, you need somebody to kind of like say hey this is the path that you need to take and the albert app with those geniuses incorporated in that would definitely be great for you but imagine this right Imagine if you're able to, you know, take surveys. I know we hate them. We always tend to yes. see them <laughs> um, when, you, when you're like either dealing with a telemarketer or, you know, someone who is helping you with a specific service. Or they scrolling always, through Facebook. Or scrolling through mm -hmm. Facebook and they say, hey, take this survey on based on our Facebook app or based on the service that was provided to you by our customer service. Mm -hmm. What if you could get paid by that? Well, there's an app for that, of course, and it's called Swagbucks. Swagbucks uh, basically gives you the opportunity to make money and profit off those annoying surveys that you don't want to take all the time. The idea is that you take a survey and you basically uh, put out your ratings for a specific company or product. Mm -hmm. And then what Swagbucks do once the app is downloaded on your phone or tablet or whatever mobile device you have, you're then able to you know, get a profit based off the survey that you take. And every number of surveys that you take equals the amount of money that you receive from the app. And it's not only limited to taking surveys. You can also test products and watch videos and also make money off of, you know, basically doing these things. So and if you're not if you're one of those people like me who don't necessarily want to sit down and take surveys all day to make a profit, you can sit down and watch, you know, videos or have a specific product in your um, home like I don't know, uh uh a Glade product, like if you like scented candles and stuff like that, and it's it comes through the app, you can then get paid for that. And to just me, to test the product, just out. to test the product, you're literally yeah. a guinea pig and getting paid for it. And that to me is very intuitive and mm. very exciting to know because it doesn't really take much effort. All you do is just download the app. <laughs> and the crazy thing about that is you have so many people that are using their phone for nothing, yeah, for nonsense, right? And also wasting their time with social media mm -hmm. so social media is great for branding you know reaching out trying to step out of that zone of you know you, you've been at work all day you're trying to get your mind off of things it's great yeah i mean there's a reason social media is taking the world by storm yes it is right because it highlights the entire world into one app mm -hmm. instagram facebook twitter right visuals if you want to if you're a reader you go on twitter if you're somebody who likes watching a lot of videos and learning new skills or entertainment youtube mm -hmm. so that's why we try to reach out to all the platforms because there's people in each platform that's looking for something that's trying to gain something yes. out of each platform and if you use this to your advantage i mean essentially if you're on instagram for two hours a day mm -hmm. which we know most likely you're on for four or five hours a day yeah. start off with 30 minutes a day go on swag bucks and see how you can make money yeah. by taking surveys, watching videos, and testing products. I mean, that's the easiest thing that I feel is a no-brainer. And if anything, you just use that money to pay off your phone bill. Yeah. Right? We know phone bills are almost like car rent payments now. Yeah. Car and rental payments. So it's like, it, it gets crazy. Just know that. You can use that now as extra money or even weekend money. Which is wonderful, actually, because it gives you that extra play money that you can have to go spend on the weekends or, you know, basically buy your everyday living needs like, you know, toiletries or whatever the case may be. And then keep the budgeted money for bills and stuff like that aside specifically for those mm -hmm. important things. Um, but nowadays, a lot of the purchases that we do, we do online. 
Amazon. The majority <laughs> on Amazon. <laughs> on Amazon, you know, it's the world renowned, you know, leader in online purchasing, taking the world by storm aside mm -hmm. from social media itself. Uh, but as far as, you know, just basically having that online market, Amazon is the place to go. Now, when you sign up with Amazon, you're likely to pay a subscription because nobody likes to wait, right? No. So you go and you get Amazon Prime. We want the fast shipment. You want the fast <laughs> shipment. You want your stuff and you want it now. But imagine if you can just have an app like Ebates, the next app that we're about to talk about, that allows you, if you purchase it through their app, to get rebates on the online purchases mm -hmm. that you make. And that goes for anything that you buy through that app from you know home appliances to you know clothes, uh, anything, uh, furni uh, furniture. They also do grocery stores. And groceries. So, so yeah. in-store items, <laughs> yeah. which, which I think is great because you know people still like going into stores to yes. buy things. Yes. And so what they offer is they have a two section thing, right? Where mm -hmm. they have online, where you can just buy their things online and you know if you're gonna go on amazon and try to buy anything if you don't need it fast use ebates yeah you're gonna be able to purchase that same item if you find it on there which most likely they they worked with some of the major companies mm -hmm. from home depot to big supermarkets lowe's yeah you know a lot of these uh, even bath and body works for the women out there right <laughs> i know you all love that body body <laughs> <laughs> i know i know they love that so you know you're gonna be able to find them on there and you also get rebates for these items amazon's not going to give you a rebate they're going to charge you yeah. subscription to get faster you know shipment mm -hmm. but if you're willing to wait and sacrifice like we talked about you're going to be able to get some money back on that item that you purchased and if you see something that you want to go in store you don't necessarily want to buy it online mm -hmm. they have a section where you can go to their in-store offers and by you spending a certain amount in store they'll give you 10 percent back some companies offer you know any, anywhere from one percent to 20 percent back i saw a company offer about 20 percent back which is really high i mean yes. a lot of times you have to get a credit card mm -hmm. right and your credit card says hey we give you cash back but then they charge you 24 percent interest at that point how much is that really helping you ebates there's no credit involved there's nothing. You just, you need a product, you find it on their app, they give you money back for buying it. I think, you know, it, it ties in perfectly into the whole ROI com, uh, conversation. Return of investment, yes. Return on your investment, man. Like, it, it beats the whole idea of spending, 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 and not getting back. So exactly. aside from the product that you're going to receive that you spent money on, you're also getting money, a, at least a portion of something that you spent towards, you know, the, the, the product or whatever, whatever item that is that you wanted. So I think it's great, man. These apps are very creative, very, very intuitive. They allow you to set yourself up in a way in which your mindset now is shifted instead of just you know spending 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 you're now thinking with a purpose and you're spending smarter yes. instead of spending recklessly and i think that's the key uh when it comes to these apps that we're presenting to you and just overall the key to having proper financial literacy that we're trying to really drive home to you guys yes and and financial literacy is the key yes. that's that's what we're talking about today right financial literacy and that's going to take us to our next app and final one yes which i believe is one of the most powerful apps out there i know you guys have heard of apps like robin hood i know you've heard of this app which we're talking about which is acorns mm -hmm. right acorns app is something that really not many people know about more people i think know about robin hood than they do about acorns yeah because robin hood is more in terms of investing and you make money on it so a lot of people are enticed by the get rich quick scheme yeah. making money now robin hood is a great app for investing but nothing is going to get you rich quick and that's something that we have to clear the air out now and let people know yeah. right so acorns i believe offers the best balance between any other app right acorns this is the reason why when i started also with i told you the albert app i tried acorns for the first time mm -hmm. i noticed something I noticed that every transaction that I would make had some sort of change in it. Yeah. So if you think about it, you know, when, back in the days when we had cash, we would spend $5 on something that cost maybe $4.30. Mm -hmm. If you do the math on that, that's 70 cents of a difference. Yeah. So what would happen naturally? I would give the guy $5, he would give me back 70 cents because I purchased four dollars and 30 cents. So that 70 cents that I have now I would probably drop in a piggy bank mm -hmm. I drop it in my cup holder Regardless of the situation most likely you get rid of those 70 cents yeah. one way or another and you forget about it This is what acorns will do for you on that transaction So let's say that 70 cents that I got acorns will tell me hey set up a limit for when you want us to invest this money So I would say hey, you know what? 
This part of acorns is called, by the way, roundup. Mm -hmm. So they round it up to the nearest dollar. So from $4.30, we round it up to $5. Yep. That's 70 cents now. So they charge my bank account $5. They take that 70 cents and they put it to the side. Let's say I make another five transactions and of that, it reaches my threshold of $5. Acorns will now take $5 from my bank account and they will dump it into five different stocks that they have and diversify it depending on how you want it. You can choose which companies you want to invest in. And we're talking about app, like companies like Disney. Yeah. You're talking about Airbnb, Uber, Lyft. See, all these companies that you're going to be able to invest in, even Apple, yeah. that you know, even if you own a little bit of stake in, in, the, in the stock market, you're still owning stock in something that's going to pay you dividends. And for those confused about what a dividend is, a dividend is simply something that a company pays their shareholders. So if you're invested into a, a company that pays dividends, and obviously these companies will tell you through the Acorns app mm -hmm. and through anywhere if they actually pay a dividends quarterly. Yeah. Quarterly meaning every three months or so, mm -hmm. right? At the end of the quarter, they'll go ahead and pay their stockholders some money. So if you invested in that company and that company pays dividends, you will now get a share every quarter. Yeah. So aside from the money that you've already put in there that's already growing and making you more money, like the stock market, right? You buy in, and as that stock goes up, you make more money. You're also going to be paid dividends by any of these companies, mm -hmm. which is them just paying you for being a shareholder. <laughs> so uh, these are things that only a sophisticated trader and investor may know. Yeah. For those of you who have no idea what I just said or what I just mentioned, but understand the concepts of what I talked about, that's mainly what Acorns will get you up on speed with is that you're going to be able to round up your amount of your transactions, and this is going to help you invest into other companies so by the time you know it let's say you sign up in acorns for a year and you do roundups for a year you'll probably be invested in 30 different companies after one year and have made about 400 dollars for the year yeah and that's maybe you just not doing much just doing the roundups which now get invested for you acorns will get the money that you normally would throw into a piggy bank and it would invest it for you and that's one of the greatest benefits i think of roundup yeah Apart from that, you now have become a stockholder, a shareholder mm -hmm. of stocks in the stock market. So what this enables you to do is it opens up a door for you to now get an education. Mm -hmm. Learn about the companies. Do your research on the companies you're now invested in. And these companies, in the long run, you could take money out of your own paychecks and invest even more money into them aside from just the roundups. Because now you have a vast knowledge mm -hmm. of how the stock market works, what companies are going to live in the future, right? You have companies that provide convenience, Uber. Uber Eats, you've got Instacart, which get, brings you groceries to the door, Postmates, right? All these companies now, that that competition shot up from just one company. Yeah. And what people have to understand is that demand was created. Mm -hmm. People wanted convenience. Acorns is providing convenience of investing for you and saving money. So as you save money, that money is getting invested, and now you're able to make money off of that investment and get paid a dividend. Yeah. And the best part for last, those companies that you invest in, because you invested with them through Acorns, Acorns will now give you a discount with that company. So Airbnb actually, like I mentioned earlier, yeah. gave me a $100 credit towards my next stay. Not only are you investing, but you're making money back from these companies. Yeah. You're getting paid a dividends, which is the second thing, and you're gonna get discounts. Sounds like a three strike winner for me. And I mean, <laughs> and, if, and if you combine all of that, you're getting an education yes, for investing. Which is and the most think, important. That's the most important yeah. because the education is something that never goes away. The knowledge to be able to make money, to be able to print money whenever you want. I mean, it, it's key. I had a coworker back when I was working at T-Mobile and she actually started up with the Acorns app. Okay. She started saving money. She liked it. And then she got more into the sophisticated Robinhood app. Mm. Robinhood is more for day trading right and what happened is she was trading penny stocks buying and selling cannabis and weed stocks yeah and she loved it because i mean she loves cannabis yeah so she's she found this passion for now buying and selling these cannabis stocks but she was doing her research behind these companies mm. and their progress which the was progress they're making yeah the research she did all her research and now she was buying and selling these stocks to the point where robin hood sent her a request to become an official day trader because she was making too much money through the app <laughs> She was making like a hundred to two hundred dollars a day almost. Oh wow! Just from the app. Yeah. Just by using Robinhood, buying and selling penny stocks, because she became so good, just learning through Acorns and saving her money. And then she realized, hey, 
I can trade the movement mm -hmm. itself aside from being long term invested. And that's when she started trading on there. And I believe that, you know what, she's not trading the way we are. You know, she's not a full time trader. She's not trading Forex. She's not trading stock. Mm -hmm. she, she's just doing the penny stocks. <laughs> she's not even on the main stock market. She's trading penny stocks on Robinhood and just making an extra money that's going to help her on the weekends for, you know, whatever the case it is and even reinvest that money once yeah. you make it because just spending it is not going to do anything but having the discipline to reinvest your gains to make more money. I think that's key. Yeah, of course, man. You always want to look forward to the next money-making opportunity mm -hmm. versus just taking it and saying this small win can just be uh, used for something very uh, trivial yes. and for the moment. Like you yeah. don't want that. It's, it's a long game, and that's what we're trying to also drive home to you guys mm -hmm. as well. Is that you know it's good to be present in the moment and understand what you're doing. But in terms of financial literacy and money making habits, good money making habits and spending habits, you always want to think about the long run because you want to essentially build that well that you can yes. always refer to have that pipeline that you can always refer to because you want to have that well right that you don't want to run dry you want to you want to keep that pipeline mentality in your head all the time yes. so that you can always have that generational wealth that we spoke about in episode mm -hmm. three you know to prolong for the generations to come in your family your lineage and also just helping the economy better itself because yeah this is what it's all about it starts with you finding a way to make better spending habits, have better money habits, um, and understanding the value, the true value mm -hmm. of the dollar that you make. So and it all comes through sacrifices. Yeah, you have to have the discipline. You have to understand mm -hmm. what's important. You have to do what you need to do versus what you want to do. It's so many things you have to, that come into play that you have to consider. And having these apps, something that we're so accustomed to now, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, having it, having the the, the discipline and, and 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 the ideas presented to you through technology the way they are through these apps now makes it more adaptable for the person easier to digest no excuses no excuses like the friend that you mentioned with the acorns mm -hmm. into robin hood app she probably started off with acorns just to, just to say hey i want to find a way to you know better you know save money for my she was tired of living paycheck to paycheck she exactly. told me she's like i just want i just need a break out of like oh i need these extra 50 dollars till my next check <laughs> and in that and that essentially open the door like you said into a whole new realm of possibilities for her yes and you know you go in with an open mindset and you never know what can happen and that's exactly what happened for her and this is exactly what we're trying to say that can possibly happen for you and you know you just got to utilize these apps man and this is why we are presenting this content to you through the bullish entrepreneur this is how you stay bullish in not only just your thinking but also your lifestyle mm. and we really 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 want you all to engage with us Help us understand exactly what you need if this content helps you all. Um, yes. Because this this is very, very critical stuff. And if you don't pay attention, like I said, like you said, it'll pass you by. <laughs> and this was definitely a note-taking session. And yeah. I would say, you know, reach out to us in our DMs and let us know what you think. Let us know if, you know, the time that we're putting into this, it takes a lot for us to meet up do these podcasts, yeah. but it's something that we really want to provide as much value to you all. And all we ask is that you let us know how we're doing. Let us know what you think, whether you like the content, you know, what you think it helped you out on, what you think we could improve on. At the end of the day, we're all here to help one another, mm -hmm. right? And if we help one another get better, then we're going to be able to relay information better to you. And if you have any questions about any of these apps and how to use them better, of course, reach out to us. Yes. We'll be able to respond to you. We respond to everybody who writes to us and we try to provide as much value as possible. So help us to be able to make better content for you all. And always remember to grab life by the horns and live, live life bullish. bullish. Take care, guys.